to explore um, using some if then else statements and some do loop opportunities, the uh, craps program is actually a, a pretty good uh, little example of, of both of those structures. So let's just take a look here at some of the uh, rules for this. It's pretty simple. The, the first idea is that you you roll two dice and uh, if you roll a seven or an eleven, you win right on the first, you know, you just win right outright. If you roll a 2, 3, or a 12, you lose. So that's pretty straightforward. And if you roll some other number, then you have what is called a point, And you continue to play. And so what you do then is you roll the dice again, and if you match your point on one of these subsequent rolls, you win. But if on one of these subsequent rolls you roll a 7, you lose. So these rules are actually pretty simple. Now if you ever go to Vegas to gamble and you're sitting there looking at a craps table and you have all these experienced gamblers around you, these rules seem actually pretty complicated and you'll probably be terrified and walk away from the table. But actually these are pretty simple rules. So let's take a look at just the bare outlines of a program that would get you started on this. So, in this particular example, um, we're going to declare a variable for our dice roll. And we're going to roll the dice and we're going to call a built-in function, not a built-in function, but a user-defined function called toDie. I want you to notice this user-defined function. It's, it's very similar to the input box, um, other than the fact that we don't put anything inside these parentheses, you'll notice. But we do use the parentheses. And this function, I'll just show it to you, is down below. And this is how a function is defined in Visual Basic. You use the keyword function. Of course, then you have the name of the function. And we have the empty parentheses. But a function is a little different than a sub because you'll notice that we have the return type after the name of the function there in the parentheses. So we have to specify what data type will be returned from this function. Because a function acts like a value. A function will return a value. So in this particular case up here, you'll notice when we call to die, we're going to get back a value. And we're assuming that value we're going to get back is between the numbers 2 and 12 if we roll these two die appropriately. So let's take a little look at the function. We declare a couple of variables, just as you would expect, nothing magic there. We initialize these two variables to the ran between 1 and 6. And so we have two dice, and then we simply add the two dice together to get the result. And you'll notice, and this is key, we assign it to, it looks like a variable name here, but it's actually the name of the function. So the name of the function is very similar to a variable because, again, like I told you, a function is going to return a value. So it's an integer data type, and we can store a number, an integer, into the function's name. And that's how the value gets passed back from the function when we call this function. These functions are very similar to the built-in spreadsheet functions in Excel. So now we can call to die and we can get back this value. In fact, because we've defined that function, I'll show you on the sheet, I'll just click down here below my instructions on the sheet. If I, if I type in equals and I type TWO, you'll notice that Excel knows about this function now. That's what's really cool about user-defined functions. You can use them in your formulas in your worksheet. So let me just go ahead and, and I'll just go ahead and finish that off and hit enter. And so we got a 7. And you'll notice if I just go ahead and fill that across here, It'll give us a bunch of values between 2 and 12. And you know, I can fill it down and let's see what we get here. So all of these values, you notice, are between 2 and 12. So that's kind of cool. Let's go back and look at our Visual Basic. So we roll the dice. And then we have a nice opportunity here for an if-else, else-if situation. So we first ask ourselves, is the roll a 7 or is the roll an 11. If so, then we want to do something here and tell the person that they've won. And then we have an else if, which means that we're going to do another test. So what we need to do is we need to do that second test, of course, to see if the roll was a 2 or a 3 or a 12. Because if it's one of those 
the user loses. And we'll do something here appropriate for lose. And finally, we have the final else clause here. We don't need another test because if it's not a 7 or 11 or a 2 or a 3 or a 12, we don't care what else it is. We don't need to test. We just know that we need to keep going. Now we could put a little comment here if we wanted to and we could say any other sum and that's just a little comment to tell us what's going on. Any other sum and then we have a comment here that says keep going. Well in this case keep going is going to say do loop. And you got to think about it because what we want to do is we want to loop here. We want to keep rolling the dice until the user either matches the point or they roll a seven. So if we look at this we'd say do what? Well we know we have to do well we have to roll the dice. So we have to roll the dice and store that. And then we keep doing that and we do the loop until oh what would be the test here? Well, we loop until we either get our point, which was our initial roll up here. So maybe we need to save that point here somewhere. Should we save the point in a variable? Save the roll into our point? I think that sounds like a good idea. So the test then is going to be, did we get our point or did we get a 7? Well, okay, so that's when we want the loop to quit. Otherwise, it's just going to keep rolling until we get our point or we get the 7. And then finally, below this loop, we have to ask ourselves, what do we get? If, ooh, what? If some test here, we need some test here, right? Then, else, and if. So, in this particular situation, then you have to say to yourself, how do we get out of that loop? Well, the instructions pretty carefully tell you how you're going to get out of the loop. So you can only get out of that loop in one of two ways. And so you need a test here, an appropriate test. And one of the tests is probably going to lead to a win. And the other, the else clause there, it doesn't need a test because it's the only other way to go, is going to be a lose. Now, you could put the lose here, depending on what your test is, and the win down here. No big deal. And so then we hit the end if, and then we hit the end of our sub. Okay, I think that you can write this. And you know, you can embellish it a little bit. This program, as you can see here, starts at the top with a roll and then comes on down here to the very end with an end if. And then that's it. You get to just go through once and then if the user wants to try it again. So another thing you could try to do is you could put the whole thing inside of a do loop and ask the user, do you want to go again? And if the user types yes, you loop around and do it again. Do the whole roll and everything again. So that's something else you could think about doing. So uh, try to write this program and uh, see how it goes. Let me go back and we'll put the uh, directions on the screen here. And you can just hit pause and stare at those directions if you wish.